The Chesapeake Bay was permanently settled back in the early 1600s and most of the settlers from Europe learned commercial fishing techniques from the Native Americans and in fact the term waterman which is a unique term for the Chesapeake Bay was coined from England where watermen were actually ferry boat captains, barge operators, people that worked on boats but we use that term in Chesapeake Bay to describe commercial fishermen. So our watermen back then learned how to fish the species in the Chesapeake Bay from Native Americans and back then it was just the fisheries in the bay, the species in the bay were described as being so abundant that the fish would jump in the boats, the oysters grew out the water, and it was viewed to be almost a limitless resource. Up until the Europeans settled the Chesapeake Bay, the Native Americans primarily fished species for sustenance. So there was really no commercial fisheries by the Native Americans. They caught what they needed to to live. It wasn't it was only when the Europeans settled the bay that they started developing commercial fisheries. So back then when there were probably a million Native Americans living in the Chesapeake Bay watershed, uh, it could be viewed that uh, the fishery species were limitless. And it's easy to understand why they thought it would be limitless and that the impacts from fishing these species uh, would be minimal. But as the colonists grew the colonies and cut down trees for agriculture, and cut down trees for boat building, cut down trees for building homes, every tree that was cut down had an impact on the bay. And every piece of vegetation that was cut down had an impact on the bay. And, on the bay. And, um, eventually, those impacts spill over into what can and can't be caught in the Chesapeake Bay. So currently, our Chesapeake Bay has in excess of 17 or 18 million people. 17 to 18 times the number of people that were living in the bay when the colonists first arrived. So I would say that we've exceeded the carrying capacity of the Chesapeake Bay watershed. And every time we build a home on the water, every time we clear cut a forest, every time we build a bulkhead, that's having an impact on the ecology of the bay and having an impact on the species that we fish in the Chesapeake Bay. So over time, uh, this it's, it's just continued to escalate. And back in the 1800s, the mid to late 1800s, when we started having a robust oyster fishery, uh, there were 10 million bushels of oysters caught in Chesapeake Bay every year in Virginia, and another 10 million bushels caught in the state of Maryland. Scientists were warning that uh, the fishery, the resource, could not sustain those levels of harvest, but the warning signs were uh, ignored. The fishermen viewed it as a limitless resource. It was urged that, or uh, the scientists urged the the industry to try and do aquaculture or oyster farming, which is more sustainable, but the warning signs and the warnings went unheeded. So that level of oyster fishing went on well into the 1920s, and sure enough, the oyster fishery collapsed in the 20s and uh, continued to collapse for a number of different reasons. And today we're left with a fraction of what was once harvested for oysters in the Chesapeake Bay, we hit a rock bottom low of about 20 some thousand bushels around the year 2000 or a little bit earlier. But through aggressive restoration and the help of mother nature and uh, efforts from fishery management and some regulations, the fishery has rebounded. We're up now to a level of 500 to six or 700,000 bushels a year. Nothing like what it used to be, and it never will be what it used to be, but we do have a sustainable fishery that's allowing a number of watermen to make a decent living in the wintertime. For crabs, there probably wasn't much of a crab fishery way, way back in the day when the Europeans first came. 
uh, probably more of a fish, fin fish type fishery. And, and the colonists learned how to catch fish using weirs, or as the watermen around here call them weirs, and it's basically a fish trap or a pound net. And those techniques were very effective in trapping fish. There were fish camps all around the Chesapeake Bay in the coastal communities. Uh, we have had a number of those fish camps right here in Guinea. And uh, we don't, unfortunately, we don't have any fish camps left in Gloucester County, none at all. When I first started working the water in 1981, there were three or four large pound net operations in Gloucester County. Benny Belvin, Herman Green and Sons, Lionel Jenkins, Earl and Vendel Kellum were all pound net fishing. Uh, the uh, Owens up in uh, Timberneck Creek, they were fishing and uh, they were catching a lot of croaker, a lot of spot, and those fish have been cyclical. They've come and they've gone. Um, there have been a number of regulations placed on all of these species over time. Some have helped, some haven't. Some fish species need regulating, some don't. Um, for instance, spot have been, have never been really regulated. Um, and I don't think that the fishery was overfished but we don't have a spot fishery any longer. I think it's something more environmental. Uh, croakers, they come and go. And uh, we've got still got a very vibrant Hall Seine fishery with croaker. We've got quite a few Hall Seine rigs in, uh, in Gloucester County. Crabbing has probably seen one of the biggest changes uh, over time. When I was crabbing, we were, some of our good years, we were catching 50, 60, 80, 100 bushels of crabs a day. We're catching far less than that now, but uh, I think the biggest impact the crabbing has been currently is probably environmental. I think the, the watermen have been regulated to the point where they can't really sustain any more regulations. Um, but the uh, the fishery is kind of holding its own. Uh, right now, we are uh, in a rebound. The, the crabs are doing pretty good. But some of the regulations have been good, some have been bad, and probably one of the biggest impacts uh, on the industry has just been the lack of supply. But we are persevering, we're working with regulators, and we're continuing to move on.